Three teams are in, one more to go in tonight's Class A nightcap. Bureau Valley trying to improve on back-to-back third-place finishes against Chicago Power, Providence St. Mel, next on the IHSA TV Network. And welcome to Carver Arena. There's a storm of brewing, the Bureau Valley storm blowing into Carver Arena, taking on the Knights of Providence St. Mel. Hello and welcome to Carver Arena in the Peoria Civic Center in downtown Peoria. I'm Lee Hall. I'll be roaming the sidelines for you tonight. The Bureau Valley storm trying to become the first Class A team to ever take home trophies three straight years, and they do it against a very athletic Providence St. Mel team, a team that hasn't lost to a Class A school all season long. For the call of tonight's game, let's go to Jim Albrecht and Matt Taphorn. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Lee. I am Jim Albrecht, along with Matt Taphorn, and of course, uh, Bureau Valley last year led by All-Stater Ruben Slock. He's gone, but this team brings its own identity. Let's see how this Bureau Valley team made its way through the sectional and the super sectional. It was not an easy battle, not at all. A close one against Byron. They won it in OT, got by Princeton, and then a great come-from-behind victory against Yorkville. They were down by four with 30 seconds left to go, but they still pulled it off. As for Providence St. Mel. Providence St. Mel took care of Holy Trinity rather easily. Got a close one from Lyle. Lyle's a tough ball club and then knocked out Hales Franciscan to get here and try to become a Chicago champion in Class A, the first one since 1985. Let's turn our attention to Bureau Valley. I talked about a new identity. That identity is carried by one Adam Gutshaw. Gutshaw's the leader of this team, averaging nearly 14 points a ball game. He's got, going to be the guy drawing the defensive assignment for the toughest player on the other team. Tonight, that's going to be Stan Gaines for Providence St. Mel. Averaging, guys said, 14 points a game. Shoots the ball very well. Also leads the team in rebounding. So just all-around good player. They're going to need his performance tonight, along with Phil Endress, and we'll talk about him later. Yeah, you mentioned the guy Gutschall's got to stop. He's going to get some help from his teammates, but stopping this man is not easy. Mr. Division One, Mr. Gaines. Stan Gaines going to University of Minnesota last year, an All-State performer this year, averaging nearly 25 points a game and eight rebounds. Leads the team in both categories. He's the guy that they need to have a big game out of. Down here at the state tournament, there aren't too many guys you have to have a big game out of. For Providence St. Mel, it's Stan Gaines. And when you take a look at the keys to a game here in the quarterfinal, our last quarterfinal of the day, life is about experience, Matt. And of course, Bureau Valley knows how to act when they come to state. It's only a 50 mile drive from home anyway, but they start with that experience, and that's hard to beat. And they've been here the last two years, finished third place both years, three and one on the weekend in both those years. So that's very important, playing four games in this atmosphere. We talked about Stan Gaines. No gains inside. The other way I like to look at it is no pain, no gains. If they don't have the pain on defense, Stan Gaines can have a big game. And the last point is Phil Endress. We talked about him. He needs to point the way. He's, he's assumed a lot of the point guard leadership on this team, runs the offense, gets guys like Adam Gutshaw involved. He does score a lot from that point position as well. Well, everybody talks about Mr. Gaines, and rightly so for Providence St. Mel, but there's a guard outside that really makes it happen. He can shoot and he can clamp down on somebody. Emmanuel Ford, the senior, only six foot tall, but he really ignites them from his defense. They need big play out of him to generate some offense out of their defense. We touched on Stan Gaines. Need to have a big game out of him in this environment. 25 a game. He needs to step up big. And lastly, adapt to the atmosphere. We talked about Bureau Valley, them being involved in this atmosphere. Providence St. Mel needs to come out and be ready to play. One more slot remaining in tomorrow's Final Four for the Class A State Championship. Who will it be, Providence St. Mel, or will Bureau Valley reach another Saturday here in Peoria? We're about to find out. Don't go away. The final quarterfinal game of the day coming up after these local messages.
Heron Unity, Pleasant Plains. And now one other team will advance on this Friday quarterfinal day here at the Peoria Civic Center. Let's send it over to our public address announcer, Paul Herzog. Good evening, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association of the City of Peoria, welcome to America's original March Madness. Tonight's quarterfinal game features the Manlius Bureau Valley Storm, a record of 29 and 3, and Chicago Providence St. Mel, a record of 16 and 11. Let's meet the teams in this quarterfinal contest. First of all, for the Storm of Bureau Valley, a six foot junior, number 14, Josh Marlowe. 6'1", senior, number 20, Mike Jezalowski. 6'2", senior, 24, Brandon Bowman. 6'2", junior, number 30, Jake Monasmith. 6'4", junior, 34, Justin Von Holten. 6'2", junior, 44, Nick Yates. 5'11 junior, number 50, Chris Behrens. 5'8 junior, 52, Stephen Zabo. And 6'6 junior, number 54, Matt Moody. Now let's meet the Knights of Providence St. Mel. 5'8 freshman, zero. Sean Howard. Six foot freshman, number three, Javarius Johnson. Five four sophomore, number four, Charles Belt. Six foot junior, number 10, John Quinn. Six five freshman, 13, Arkeith Carter. Six foot junior, 15, Lewis Jackson. 5'7", senior, 24, Kareem Freeman. 6'0", senior, 33, Virgil Vaughn. 6'4", senior, 34, Ronald Barnes. And a 6'4", sophomore, 35, Theron Pigram. Now let's meet the starting lineups. And a forward for Bureau Valley, a 6'3 senior, number 12, Adam Gutshaw. And a forward for Providence St. Mel, a 6'7 senior, 21, Stanley Gaines. Another forward for the Storm, a 6'4 junior, number 40, Nathan Coney. And a forward for the Knights, a 6'1 senior, 32, Larry Morris. At center for Bureau Valley, a 6'2 senior, 42, Greg Cooley. One of three guards for Providence St. Mel, a 5'8 senior, number five, Lanfrey Comer. And a guard for the Storm, a 6'1 junior, number 10, Reed Oberly. Another guard for the Knights, a 6'3 sophomore, number 11, Justin Sarasoli. Another guard for Bureau Valley, 6'3 senior, 32, Phil Endress. Third guard for Providence St. Mel, a 6'0 senior, 22, Emmanuel Ford, head coach of Bureau Valley in his 12th season, seven for the Storm, a record of 150 and 57, Brad Bickett. Assistant coaches, Brett Helms, Jason Stabler, and Nick Parks. Head coach for Providence St. Mel in his second season, his record is 34 and 23, Timothy Irvin. Assistant coaches, Jerome Dowdy, Demetrius Robinson, Rebert Harris, and Mike Dowdy. No other state in America can claim the rich history and tradition has been generated by March Madness in Illinois. March Let's Madness take a look at the starting lineups here in the final quarter, final round game. 
Mr. Gutschall, of course, leading the charge. Koenig, Cooley, Overly, and Endress. We can't wait to see Endress play here tonight for Bureau Valley. And everybody's buzzing about Mr. Gaines, of course, starting for Providence St. Mel, along with Morris, Comer, Sarasoli, and Emmanuel Ford, who his coach thinks he should be a Division I prospect. We shall see tonight. A lot of people are here looking at him. Definitely. There were a lot of guys in the first few ball games tonight as well. And there's, there's a lot of good talent in the Class A level in the state of Illinois. And, and every now and then you'll find a, a great player. I know Illinois State is glad to have had Sean Jepson down there at Illinois State for the last four years. And he was a Class A player that really put on a show in one of the semifinal games here about four years ago. Brad Bickett, the head coach, of course, for Manlius Bureau Valley. He knows all about this. He played, of course, at a very small school named Ohio. Came all the way down to state, finished second. Timothy Irvin in his second year as the head man for Providence St. Mal, having served as an assistant coach at the school. And it's Providence St. Mel, as you might expect, with Gaines controlling the tip. So Giro Valley may be in a box and one here. Keeping an eye on Gaines around the floor. And again, we talked about Adam Gutschall getting the assignment. He's right on him inside. Yeah, he's making him work early. Sarah Soli, who gets about 14 a game. In and out, no good. Rebound is fought for. Ford touched it last. Ford big and strong inside. That's actually it was Larry Morris on the offensive board. Morris went hard for the rebound, just couldn't get both hands on it. Here's the man who runs it for Euro Valley, Phil Enders. He had to take over it point guard. That's not his usual position, but the last year's point guard graduated. Here's a missed shot inside as Bureau Valley will set it back up or just met, let Oberly take it. Not there, but they control again. Bureau Valley's come up with a couple of second chance opportunities. See if they can cash in on it. They cannot. 0 for 3 that trip down. Here comes Providence St. Mel with Sarasoli. Between the legs. Stops. 14 footer. Not there. Rebound comes down nicely to Andrus. And Andrus, even though he's the point guard, averages seven rebounds per contest. He and Gutshaw are really interchangeable at the positions out there. They play guard, forward, center. Doesn't matter. They guard the other team's best player. Way on the outside is Andrus, and he can't find the mark and letting it go out of bounds. He is land free Comer. Of course, Providence St. Mel making that long trip from Chicago and uh, Manlius. Not all that far away, but they know how to get here. That's for sure. They know how to get here by turning the ball over on the defense, and they cannot control at the other end, so nobody's making any impact early here. Matt? Guess all couldn't corral that ball. He tried to dribble it off of the pass instead of grabbing it with two hands and getting control. Good steal at the other end by Endress. And now we have Bureau Valley in their more patented 1-3-1 one, one half-court trap. Emmanuel Ford waits. And he gives it up to Comer, and they'll go the other side, kicked out of bounds. Very accustomed to seeing Ruben Slack on the point of that 1-3-1 one, one defense the last two years. We've mentioned they finished third in both those years in the state, state finals. And now we have Nathan Koning running the top on that defense. Ford will pull up and nail it. Good-looking baseline shot that time by Ford. Left-hander really got some good elevation on that jump shot. Ford averages 14 per contest, and as we said, he's their top defender. A turnover at the other end. Gaines comes up with it, quickly gives it off to Sarasoli, and Providence St. Mel is on the run, but out of bounds. Ford stepped on the end line. Ford ran out a little room that time, was trying to get his back to the sideline to extend the transition break. We stepped out of bounds. We mentioned that Phil Endress had to learn to uh, take over that point guard position because John Elliott, who was the point guard last year, here's a long jumper outside by Overly. They can't find the mark, but Bureau Valley controls the offensive rebound. Overly with a nice drop pass. It's going to be a free throw for Nathan Cody. Good dunk, dunk down pass that time. Great action on the offensive end. That time we had Reed Overly on the nice pass inside, bounce pass inside to Coney. It's kind of the big city guys against the little town guys. Here mainly is, of course, a very small town, 450 total, 398 students, Three Rivers Conference, and, well, Chicago, three and a half million people. Cook County, of course, is where Providence St. Mel hails from, and their enrollment actually lunar and less than Manlius. 
And I, when I looked at that graphic, there were only 52 people that weren't enrolled in school. So I'm not sure how if that was that <laughs> accurate. Might have been a typo. In Bureau Valley. <laughs> Might have been a typo. Both teams still trying to feel their way through the opening minutes here in the final quarter, final game. Sarasoli goes down low, right back out to Ford, and they'll re-crank it again. Sarasoli finds an opening and wants to glass, but good defense by Bureau Valley causes him to step. Bureau Valley just got their hands on the ball. Sarasoli has been very active on the offensive end, took it strong to the basket that time, just deflected off of his hand, and he corralled it back again and was called for a travel. A couple of things to notice early, Matt. One is that Stanley Gaines hasn't had his hand on the ball yet. That's a great point, but the other thing I like about Providence St. Mel is they're somewhat deliberate on the offensive end. They don't take bad shots. They really try to work the ball around and get a decent shot. sarasoli has been a big part of that here in the first half. Here's Gaines. He'll pull up. That's a shot. One of many. Not there. Rebound. Comes down nicely to Endress. A little impatient that time down the floor, however, is Stan Gaines. Wanted to try to get himself going on the offensive end. The Storm looking for their first hoop. Outside is not there. Tony couldn't find it. But Bureau Valley will maintain possession. Yeah, Emmanuel Corey was too slow getting to the ball. Phil Enders was able to get to it quicker and knocked it off of him out of bounds. This IHSA broadcast is being brought to you by Agco Tractor. Agco Tractor, you got to drive one. And of course, country insurance and financial services, real people, real answers, real quick. A slow start here at the Peoria Civic Center for the final game. Of course, we've already had two. There's Agco, as you see. You've got to drive one. Agco tractor. <laughs> Welcome back to the IHSA Television Network. A slow start for a couple of teams who are used to putting a lot of points on the board. Now, don't be fooled by Providence St. Mel's 11 losses, Matt. Of course, all 11 of those losses, at least the good portion, 10 of them came against double-A schools, and in that double-A bracket of losses, five of those losses were to teams that finished in the top 11 at the end of the regular season. So they're used to playing really tough competition, and uh, Bureau Valley is a team that's used to uh, getting a big gap on people by the end of the game. They are. They, they have a 15-point uh, disparity in the, the margin of victory against teams this year and so they're they're definitely in a situation where they can put points on the board they're only one out of four or excuse me 0 for 7 from the field that was one out wow. of four for Providence St. Mel 0 for 7 for the field in the early going for Bureau Valley Overly will inbound to Andrus who wants three and gets it nice shot of shooting that three point shot that's one out of four and finally Phil Andrus Breaks the seal on the bucket. Andrus had 65 from beyond the arc coming into tonight. Tap one more on that and give the Storm their first lead and a turnover at the other end. And again, Gaines is having trouble getting the ball inside. Nice cut and a foul. Adam Gutshaw is cutting. Bureau Valley will inbound. Enders with the big three at the other end, shooting about 35% from three-point range on the season, but he's definitely not shy of putting that up. Larry Morris picked up the personal on that one. Koenig drops it down low to Gutsall, who drops it across the other way, and they don't get the bucket. They don't get the bucket as Cooley missed in close. Cooley may have heard some footsteps from a one Stan Gaines inside the paint area. Sarasoli spinning with nobody to pass it to. Five turnovers here in the first four minutes of, play, of action for Providence St. Mel. We've played over four minutes. And here's another outside jump. And this doesn't hesitate whatsoever on that three-point shot. He gets great elevation. Really jump well. And he had Emmanuel Ford flying at the shot that time. Well, if anybody's used to playing on this floor, at this time of the year, it's Phil Endress. His third state tournament in a row as a starter. His brother Adam, of course, played on the 2000 team for Bureau Valley, so they got a lot to talk about at home. That's a good point. As a starter, it's not that he was just 
made the trip down here. He was a big part of the reason they went six and two over the last two seasons, first finished third place in both years. Gaines misfires. Ball goes to Bureau Valley. And the Knights, we said it at the opening. Matt, you got to get used to the atmosphere. Now, Gaines, I haven't seen him play all year long, but I know he's not misfiring that badly. Well, you see there's some long faces on the Providence St. Mel Knights right here in the first quarter and not having much success in the early going. Gutschall dropping it down low. Endress can go inside. Outside is the shot, not there. Koenig has not been on the mark at all tonight. Here comes Sarasola. A good rebound there by Emmanuel Ford, not allowing Endress to get to the basket and corral that offensive rebound. Gaines with a jump pass across the way to Comer. It is not there, and we've got a foul on Gaines. Good box out that time by Adam Gutsall and was able to keep Gaines on his back, and when the ball came off, he got in the air. That was the key because Gaines, with that 6'7", has about a four-inch advantage over Gutsall inside, and he was whistled for the foul. Brad Bickett was asked, do Bureau County folks ever take all this success for granted? And he said, what are you kidding me? <laughs> they love this stuff. They appreciate every time we come down here. Another great following by the storm from Bureau Valley here today. Great crowds all day long in the quarterfinal round. Andrus working left wing, almost lost it, and now maintains possession as they'll inbound. Emmanuel Ford has stepped up his defensive effort now as Phil Endress has hit a couple of big threes. He needs to get some offense generated from the defense as we talked about in the open, and he's starting to pick it up defensively against Endress. Yeah, some interesting defensive matchups, as Matt noted, and of course on the other side of the ball, Gutsall containing Mr. Gaines fairly well. Long jumper by Overly is not there. They can't get hot. And Soli will bring it down. They're launching the threes. They shoot about a third of their shots from three-point range, and already here today, two out of seven and taking 12 shots all overall. The alley-oop goes awry. It was intended for Gaines, but it was contested as it got near the glass. Look at Ford dogging Andrus. And that's what you want to do. You want to make him give up his dribble. There's a pass underneath the basket. A misfiring and a turnover will go the other way. Bureau Valley leads it in a very uh, tentative first quarter for both teams. Nine turnovers combined between the two teams. That was the third one on Bureau Valley here in the first quarter. Gaines averaging 25 points a contest has yet to find the mark and now a sloppy pass as Landfree Comer tried to find Ford but overthrew him. And I'm sitting right next to Timothy Irvin, and if looks could kill, I might be deceased. <laughs> well, Emmanuel Ford that time tried to catch the ball in one hand instead of grabbing with two, and he's coming down the floor saying it's my fault. And the coach says, I don't care if it's your fault. Get the job done. Coning will go out for Bureau Valley, and checking in is Justin Von Holten, number 34. Euro Valley in that light blue with the lead in the basketball. Endress against Ford. Makes a bad pass. Here comes Sarasoli. They've got the numbers, three on two to the glass. It counts. Nice move that time by Sarasoli. He realized that he couldn't beat Endress down the floor. He just hesitated and was able to lay the ball in up off the glass. Only a sophomore making that move. Nice looking player. Also in the game, Brandon Bowman wearing number 24 for Bureau Valley. This is Bowman. Oh, he almost walked. Will they hold for the final shot? Ball is tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Providence St. Mel. The Knights at 16-11. Coming in and, of course, an independent, so they can pretty much choose who they want to play. And they play a lot of double-A teams like Proviso East, Westinghouse, Crane, Young, Manly, Simeon. Ten of those 11 losses, again, to double-A schools. A jumper by Overly, not enough. Gaines in a hurry. He's got time, 25 seconds and counting. Gaines headed to be a Minnesota Golden Gopher next year. Sarasoli will wait. Neither team with much of an advantage here. 
Gaines wants to do it himself, and he can't. It's loose on the floor. It's fired by Ford in and out, and the rebound comes down. And that's the way the first quarter will come with a rebound by Edris, who actually hit iron with that three-quarter length attempt. 7-4 after one quarter. We'll be back with quarter number two after these local messages. Uh, well, Stanley Gaines, he's our best player this year, 6'7", on his way to um, University of Minnesota. Uh, he's a great kid. He's a great leader. Uh, he's very versatile. He can play inside and outside. He's been, you know, he's proven to do whatever it takes to win. That, of course, head coach Timothy Irvin for Providence St. Mel, who also commented that Mr. Gaines has really matured over the last year and has become a team leader. Well, this is when leadership is needed, when... The game is as big as it gets, and of course, after the super sectional win, Gaines said, hey, I'm, I'm trying to make every game special now. These are my last high school games before I get on to my college career. Well, with one quarter out of the way here in this quarterfinal game, he's got no points and two rebounds. Good defense on the inbounds, and the turnover by Bureau Valley will give the Knights a chance to go down, and if they can hit a three, we'll start anew here. Tied. Sarasoli can hit the three. Splits the D. Comer won't take a lot of shots, number five. This guy will take a lot of shots. He takes about a third of the team's shots, but he's got too much iron on that. Out to Ford, Emmanuel, too much iron. Back to Gaines. Gaines playing a little volleyball under there. will power up. It'll go to the free throw line. Neither team putting on a shooting clinic here in this ball game. First quarter, 14% for Bureau Valley and now with those few shot attempts there in the early going in the second quarter, we've got Providence St. Mel shooting a frigid 20%. Gaines, pretty good free throw shooter at about 70% on the year. I'll tell you what, right now, if you're Coach Timothy Irvin for Providence St. Mel, you're saying, okay, everything's cool because we played, we have played terribly, but we're all right, we're, yeah. we're, we're in the game. Yeah, they have seven turnovers, which clearly is not a formula for success. But uh, offensively, they haven't had a lot of opportunities and Stan Gaines now with only one point, but they only tra trail by two. Bureau Valley will put a lot of bodies in the lineup. Andrus, he can get over to Gutsall who hangs and he'll get rewarded with a couple of free throws. Bureau Valley does a great job running that little screen and roll at the high post. Phil Endress and Adam Gutschall that time just traded passes and Gutschall got a good look. And Endress has got nice size for a point. Besides his mobility, he's at 6'3", 175. Handles the ball very well for a guy that has not really played point guard for the last couple of years. That duty was John Elliott's, of course, and Elliott now attending the University of Illinois, not playing ball, just as a student. Mike Barron's also from that third place team last year and the year before. He's at Western Illinois on the track team. Discus in the shot put. And of course, Ruben Slot, the All-Stater, is attending Elmhurst, where he is the leading scorer. Boy, that's a shocker there. <laughs> that guy was a player. And still is, apparently. Bureau Valley up 9-5. Slow starting first half here. Sarasoli got it. There's the three I was talking about. And Sarasoli now with eight 
points. In, or no, excuse me, he's got five points now in the ballgame, but he's been the most effective offensive weapon for the Knights. Five of the eight. Coney has not been hot, and he remains that way. Ford goes high for the rebound, and here comes Providence St. Mel with a chance to take the lead. Sarasoli Somebody better get him. No. But the ball comes off the hands of Coney, but last touch, they say. By 40, he had a good look, did he? He did, and, and you can't be frustrated with a shot like that. A guy who's a shooter just knocked one down. You got to let him take it again. Sarasoli just stepped right up. Defense didn't come out after him. He's dribbling the ball off the floor, and that's usually an easy way to move right into your shot is off the dribble. Andrews calling out the play. Lots of time remaining before we break at the half. Ooh, almost to travel up top. Gutshaw, double team. Bowman looks, but decides against it. And Koning's got to be thinking, should I be taking a shot or giving it to Gutsall? And it's off the rim. A good interior pass, but no good result. And again, Stan Gaines inside defensively. Gutsall tried to lay that high off the glass, adjusted his shot just a little bit, and came up short. Seton Hall came calling for Stan Gaines, along with Michigan State, Illinois, Stanford. He chose Minnesota. I asked him why. He said, PT. I get playing time right away. Of course, we'll see about that. Sarah Soli, fourth for a sophomore. He's pretty smooth and he looks pretty cool about it, doesn't he? Gaines will force the issue and he'll walk. You know, the, the comment you made about him getting play time, I bet you some of those guys at the University of Minnesota will have some objections to that right now. <laughs> you know, they don't expect the freshman to come in and take playing time away from him. He's going to have to fight for it wherever he goes. Of course, last year we had a, a great freshman, well, a freshman now. Pierre Pierce for Westmont, who broke the uh, all-time scoring record last year. And it got, he got PT at Iowa, but it just shows how hard it is on that next level. Oberly needs it, doesn't get it. High for the rebound is Sarasoli. And again, the same scenario for St. Mel, a chance to take the lead. This is the third time they've gotten that scenario. That's a big benefit when you got a guy that can get up and rebound like that and then start to break on his own. The rest of the team can really turn around and head down the floor in offensive transition. Sarasoli was fouled on his way to the baseline. Not a lot of personnel coming in for Timothy Urban except for the players on the floor. Of course, he's got a pretty good hand to play out there, doesn't he, Matt? Absolutely. Good first five here for Providence St. Mel. And Sarasoli really is impressed in the early going. Homer. Not there. Gaines fighting, hits the deck, and here comes Bureau Valley. Overly will just slow. Up top is Endress. He's contested. Doesn't matter. And Stan Gaines coming up from behind. And he had Emmanuel Lewis or Ford coming at him from the front side. He still knocks it down. Third three-point shot of the game. Three out of five. All five of his attempts have come from behind the three-point line. And of course, the man who's telling you about that, Matt Tapper, still holds the record for three-point shooting percentage. Guts all to the hole. Yeah. And Stan Gaines was nowhere to be found in that defensive transition. And Guts all took it through the hoop, took it strong. And without Mr. Gaines in the way, was able to get it up off the glass and in. Who, who was leading the fast break? Andrus giving it up right at the right time, top of the key, off to the right side, and that's two, and could be a three-point play for Adam Gutsall. Of course, uh, played on the football team, had a pretty serious injury in football that kind of carried over the basketball, but he gutted it out. And we got a timeout on the floor as Providence St. Mel tries to get it together. They were within one, but suddenly they trail by seven, 15 to eight. We'll take a timeout. Thanks a lot. Uh, we've got great seats here. We're in the second row with uh, Jolene Bickett, Brad Bickett's wife, and you, and you know she's Brad Bickett's wife because it says so right on her hat. Where'd you get those styling hats? Oh, some of the parents, uh, the moms of the players made them for us. They look very nice, by the way. Uh, and, and Mrs. Bickett has a big thing coming up in about a month. Can you tell us what that is? We're expecting our second child. <laughs> uh, do you guys have to plan ahead for those kind of things so you don't have a baby during basketball season? Oh, definitely. My first child was also due in April. We stay out of November through March. All right, we want you to stay calm here. No jumping around or anything. All right, we're going to keep her calm. Back to you guys. Well, I've heard of family planning. Now I know about basketball family planning. Here's a turnover. Bureau Valley trying to get it before hustling after it. And now he's got numbers. Gaines forcing it, hanging. 
Gaines is not on tonight, and if that doesn't reverse itself, Matt, you can pretty much say goodbye to Providence St. Mel. And right now, it's a two-man game for Bureau Valley between Gutshaw and Phil Indres. They've got 14 of Bureau Valley's 15 points. Oh. There he is again. Not a good result. Not the fourth three of the night for Endless. Couldn't quite get himself squared that time coming off the screen. Didn't have his feet squared to the bucket or his shoulders. Came up a little short. Sarah Soli was in a little trouble there. Gaines with a nice little dish. And that's a good shot. Great pass that time by Gaines. See if that gets him going on the offensive end. Good unselfish play. Drew the defense toward him and dished it off. Down low to the baseline seven-foot jump shot. Larry Morris with the two. And here's a... The kind of turnover that drives coach is crazy. Just uh, somebody taking their eye off the ball. Exactly. And that time, Coney just took his eyes off the ball momentarily. Enough to slip out of his hands and go out of bounds. And if the Knights can score here, again, they've kind of steadied themselves. They were trailing 15 to 8. When Coach Irvin called a much-needed timeout. But the story so far has been the defense and the lack of... Here's an alley-oop to Gaines, but it's too high. It was the right idea from Sarah Soli, and I'm sure they've done that all year long, and Gaines is going, man, it was there. that's what we needed. It was there, but Sarah Soli tried to pass off the dribble instead of getting himself set and getting the ball up to Gaines, kind of took it off, took his eyes off his momentum, just kind of carried the ball away from the basket rather than to the rim. A little too high. Turn around on the baseline. Koenig is staying cold tonight. And Gaines, who averages right around nine rebounds a game, gets another. He can shoot from the outside. And Bureau Valley will certainly be content to yep. let Mr. Stan Gaines shoot from 18, 19, 20 feet all afternoon or all evening. The percentages pick up when he shoots inside, and here's a foul on Emmanuel Ford. And Ford got away with that the last time down the floor when Endress missed the three-point shot, and that time Gutsall did a good job holding his ground. He talked about Gutsall being a football player. He took a football hit there without the pads. And, of course, Gutsall hit the game winner against Yorkville in a very exciting game. They were down by four with 30 seconds remaining in the super sectional. Overly hits a three. Yorkville misses the front end of a one and one. And then the game winner by Gutsall, who goes up and doesn't get it, gets his own shot back up. And Let's try it the second time and get an extra point. Great job by Gutsall. Staying with the play. Ball came off the rim, got, got up quickly off his feet once again. Get the rebound and gets hit, hit on the hand from behind to get the nice little roll and go in for the three-point opportunity. And you had three nights going for the basket and nobody put in the body. Exactly. That's all. And that's a three-point play the old-fashioned way. And the biggest lead of the night for the Storm of Bureau Valley, it's 18 to 10. And gets all with eight points. Enders with nine, 17 of the 18 points coming from the big two for Bureau Valley. They'll pinch up top. Ford gets it right back out to Sarah Soli. Fading and hitting. Sarah Soli is a nice player. He gets his shoulder square very well. Has good follow through. Very confident for a sophomore. Virgil Vaughn in the ball game, wearing number 33 for Providence St. Mel right now. And he'll draw the attention of Oberly. Guts off, fakes, goes up, doesn't get it. Rebound, there's Koenig. Koenig wants it, gets it. And Stan Gaines got moved out of the play as he was trying to go after the shot by Gutsall and didn't recover back inside. And Koenig was able to get the rebound and lay it back in. And now we've got a traveling call out front. 11 turnovers here in the first half by Providence St. Mel. The wheels are starting to come off right now. If you're just joining us, Manlius Bureau Valley has been here three years in a row now. No team has ever taken home hardware three years in a row in Class A, but that's what they're attempting to do with two third-place finishes in the last two campaigns. Oh, what a move by Gutsall! Good left hand. He threw that one up. Didn't know how to get off the floor, and Gaines just kind of swatted at it in the midair. The ball just went up off the glass. Great move that time by Adam Gutsall. And almost a turnover. Ford somehow got it back. Sarah Soli looking for Gaines, and Gaines is tripped up by Oberlin. The story in this first half has been Bureau Valley's outside shooting in the form of Phil Endress and the lack of shooting from Mr. Gaines. And neither team is shooting the ball very well. Still 27% for Bureau Valley, 29% for Providence St. Mel. I think the key right here is 
St. Mel just keeps gains out on the floor offensively. Doesn't get him inside whatsoever. I think they have a big advantage if they try to get the ball inside to him. Here's Ford. Missed everything. He's got side spin on that shot. Missed everything, but he claps his hands and says, we'll get it back. There's a concerned Timothy Irvin in his second year as head coach at Providence St. Mel. Well, a, lot of, a lot of people look at this Chicago school syndrome as to why they don't win a state championship because they always have such good talent. And when you talk about it, it always comes down to, well, do they have that team attitude as, a, as opposed to just talent? Well, some of that, it's also having more of a disciplined team. As Andrew Knicks knocks down another big shot, he's got 11. So step right ahead of Mr. Adam Gutsall for the lead for Bureau Valley. Gaines, can you be any further away from the basket? You know, he's got some great ability, but, you know, in this situation, you got to do go with what's going to help your team. And certainly dribble the ball 40 feet from the basket is not going to win this ball game against a, a solid team like Bureau Valley. And the storm has doubled up here, as you can see, 24-12. Lee Hall will be talking with the head coach of Manlius right at the break. Brad Bickett, of course, as you heard, expecting his second child, but uh, I'm sure he's concerned about that and hopes everything goes well, as do we, but uh, I think he's concentrating on the game right now. Gaines missed that one. Got it back. He's got to get a bucket before the half and finally does. His first bucket. That gives him three points in the ball game. They got to hurry. Guts all floating. Has it blocked? No, charge it. It was blocked and it was a charge. Stan Gaines finally making a presence on the defensive end. Larry Morris set up shop in front of him. And uh, with two seconds remaining, let's see if they set up a half court pass play. I don't see anybody standing at half court. The towel boy is getting a workout down there. Nobody on the ball here in this situation. I'd put somebody on the ball to bother him. Get a clean look down the floor. Oh, they got a look, but a good defensive play by. Oh, almost nailed it. Oh, oh, oh. oh really came up, stole the pass, and got a pretty good look from half court. Had that gone in, the storm would have been storming into the locker room. And not more long faces heading into the locker room for Providence St. Mel. Bureau Valley very effective in the first half now with a 10 point lead. Brad Bickett's had it going on every quarterfinal game. He's got it going on again. He's standing by with Lee Hall. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Uh, we're with Brad Bickett, who I think makes reservations a year in advance uh, coming down here to Carver Arena the last few years. Uh, not a shooting clinic by either team, Coach, but uh, you guys knocked down more shots uh, than they did and played better defense. Thank you. Uh, our kids are playing hard. Uh, the half court trap seems to be giving them some problems. We just got to make some shots at the offensive end. I think we're getting good looks. We're good shooters. We'll come out second half, rest it a little bit here at half, and we'll make some shots second half and hopefully, you know, keep the game like it is. I'll tell you what, you came very close to making a couple of buzzer beaters there. We did. Our kids like to make some plays. It's a very gifted group. They're fun to coach and uh, they're pretty fearless. So hopefully we can just keep playing well. All right. Good luck to you second half. Thank you. Thanks. All right, let's go back to you, Jim. Thanks, Lee. Matt, if you're, if you're the coach of Providence St. Mel, do you really have to readjust your thinking right now? Do you have to say, I've got an all-stater out there, I've got a guy who's a Division One prospect, and they've keeping him, they're keeping him 20 feet away from the basket. I've got to try to dump this ball inside until it hurts? Absolutely, and I think what the other thing they need to do, and I don't know how much of this they do, is, is play more of a, a defense where they keep gains in the middle and where he can get some rebounds and create some defensive pressure. He hasn't, other than that black shot right there towards the end of the half, hasn't really been a factor defensively. And I tell you, Bureau Valley does a great job moving the ball, getting open looks. And when you get guys like Phil Endress, Adam Gutsall that just double team you, you know, from the offensive end, they've got a great advantage. And, and right now they're really going to those two. They're hot in the first half. They've got uh, between the two of them, 21 out of their 24 points. Well, success is pretty habit forming, at least for Bureau Valley. And they have success here in the first half. We'll come back and see if Providence St. Mel has any luck in the second half, closing the gap. We're back after these local messages.
And welcome back to Carver Arena. It's a 24-14 halftime lead for Bureau Valley over Providence St. Mel. And we are with the father of Stan Gaines Jr. And you guessed it, it's Stan Gaines Sr. Uh, kind of a tough first half there, Dad. Yeah, they, they seem a little tight. I'm hoping they'll come out and uh, loosen up a little bit and get something going here. You guys uh, are used to good competition. You play an outstanding schedule being an independent play. A lot of double-A teams haven't lost to a Class A school all year. That's correct. Uh, we played all of the teams in the Red West in Chicago Public League. Didn't do so swell, but hopefully it prepared us for this. Uh, would you like to see the our play-by-play our -play guy and, and color commentator? We're talking about getting Stan inside more. Would you do you think that would help? Well, yeah. If he can get something going inside, or if the other players can get something going outside, maybe he can go down low and maybe do some work. Now we were talking to your high school coach from your old high school days, Tom Shields. Where was that again? At Holy Trinity High Holy School. Holy Trinity. Uh, and we asked him about you as a player, and he said you're maybe a little more physical than your son. Well, uh, <laughs> that's how I was back then, but uh, he, he's going to uh, get a little bit more physical when he goes to the Big Ten next year. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, uh, tell me about uh, the recruitment process for for Stan. Uh, tell me what that's been like. Why he came to the decision to go to Minnesota? Well, it was awesome. Um, I think that a lot of people showed interest in him. We went up to Minnesota, met the coach, met the coaching staff, met the team, and he fell in love with him. It's a perfect fit for him. He can uh, go a little inside, go a little outside, and he's in the Big Ten, so we get to see him a lot. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, what do we need to see from Providence St. Mel here in the second half? I think we just need to calm down a little bit. I think the kids are a little excited. I think once they get in the floor of the game, we'll be okay. All right, Stan Gaines Sr., thank you very much for coming down and joining us thank tonight. You. Good you. luck to you in the second half. It's 24-14 at the half. Providence St. Mel down 10 to Bureau Valley. We will be back with more from Carver Arena after this local break. Welcome back to the Peoria Civic Center. As you can see, Bureau Valley has the edge as far as being the final team to get into the Final Four, which starts tomorrow right here, of course, on the IHSA television network. But there are a lot of minutes left to play. As you heard Stan Gaines' father say, hey, they can still get in the flow. He, of course, has been to some of those double-A games against powerhouses inside of Chicago, so he's seen uh, what can happen when the spread gets too big. But uh, they've got to do some serious talking in that locker room. They do. We talked about some of the experience that Bureau Valley has in this environment. They surely showed that in the first half, and we'll see what kind of adjustments Providence St. Mel can make here in the second half, because they clearly need to get Stan Gaines more involved in the offense. He's only one out of seven from yeah. the floor. Well, speaking of stats, let's take a look at some of the numbers here in the first half as Bureau Valley has a pretty healthy lead, but uh, the field goal shooting is, well, it's kind of scary if you're a coach, but if you're the winning coach at this point, you'll take it anyway. Not very good by both teams. 30% for Providence St. Mel, only 29% for uh, Bureau Valley. But, you know, again, look at the, the rebounding disparity. 17-15 in favor of Bureau Valley. They've taken quite a few threes, and they're not shy to put that ball up. The other thing is turnovers. Providence St. Mel had 12 turnovers in the first half. Really caused a lot of problems on the offensive end. They went to that 1-3-1 one, one de defense, did Bureau Valley, and that created some turnovers, deflected some passes out top. As they had uh, Nathan Koning playing that top position, we talked about that early on. He's got some good long arms and, and really 
created a lot of problems. Six steals in that first half for Bureau Valley. Let's see who did knock it down. Of course, Andrus had those threes from the outside, three of them to be exact. And of course, Gutsall, he's pretty much uh, Mr. Everything. He says he doesn't even like to play inside, but he's got to because of this team. And uh, he could step outside, but that's his duty right now. And he scored 10. And of course, Sarasoli was hot early, but even he cooled down in the second half for Providence St. Mel. He's got a lot of potential out there on the floor, but it needs to be more of an inside out game between he, he and, and Stan Gaines. They didn't do that in the first half. They both worked on the perimeter. It's easier to guard two guys like that with the same type of ability when they stay out on the floor. They need to get that inside out combination going, make the defense play honest. Needless to say, the first four minutes of the second half will be important for Providence St. Mal. We're back at the Peoria Civic Center after these local messages. Providence St. Mel kept it close early, and Sarasoli had a big hand in it, Matt. There's his first bucket of the day. And then, of course, Larry Morris, who didn't score a lot, scored there. And Stanley Gaines, who hit only one basket, and that was in the final minute of the second quarter. Bureau Valley had it going on early. Adam Gutsall, he liked that one. Up top. Gutsall couldn't get it, but Koning did. And there's Adam Gutsall again. Great left hand that time off the glass. We touched on that in the first half. Gutsall was big inside. Endress was big outside. That's that inside-outside combination. The Bureau of Valley had in the first half to see if Providence St. Mel could do something in the second half. Let's go to Lee Hall courtside. Lee. All right, Jim, thanks a lot. We're with Tim Irvin. Uh, Tim, we saw a lot of stand gains outside. Are we going to see more inside the second half? Well, we're going to try to get the ball to him inside. We have to um, take care of the basketball so in order to get the ball down there to him. What, uh, what else did you tell your team there at halftime? Uh, uh, You've you played good defense. I mean, neither team has really been able to shoot the ball that well. Well, I just told him we got to execute our offensive game plan, which is to attack the zone in the trap that we have not been doing that. We're very timid in the first half, so I just want our guys to be more aggressive and attack the zone better. Okay, Coach, good luck to you second half. Appreciate it. Back to you guys. Thanks, Lee. We'll get back to that second half action after this timeout. The house is jumping tonight, of course, uh, for that uh, third game. This place was almost uh, packed, and they can fit about 11,000 people in here. And uh, the remaining people who are staying for the second game of the night are going to uh, either just kind of kick back and let it happen, unless Providence St. Mel gets back into it, then they'll kind of cling to the edge of their seats. And the last game of the, of the day here in the quarterfinal round, some of the crowd is dispersed, but Bureau Valley is still here in strong force trying to cheer their team on a coach Brad Bickett with a 10 point lead at half. I never could understand how a coach can keep his suit coat on during a game. <laughs> Bickett is taking his off. Again, a turnover. All the way down is Endritz with the left hand. He is contested by Sarasoli, and he'll get a trip to the free throw line. And that is not what Coach Tim Irvin had in mind at halftime. He wanted to take better care of the ball. After 12 turnovers in the first half, they have won the first possession. Don't forget, we're back tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock. Kurt Pegler, Doug Altenberger, myself, and of course, Matt Tapborn bringing you the semifinal action. Sometimes those semifinal games are just so intense, man, it's unbelievable. 
Endress got it. Of course, the Bureau Valley does hang on. They'll be taking on a Pleasant Plains team that got tested to the limit by Cinderella. Bloomington Central Catholic, which came in at 15 and 15 and took it to overtime and had the last shot in regulation, but couldn't get it to fall. Can Providence St. Mel solve anything? Down low, it's Morris. He throws a wild one up, but Gaines is there and he's fouled. And Phil Endress wants to plead his case with the official on the baseline, but Gaines was right there, picked up the loose change, went up strong, and Endress on the arm to pick up the foul. Gaines will go back to the line. He was one for two in the first half. They changed their starting lineup just a bit. They put in Kareem Freeman in place of Lanfrey Comer here in the second half. What? Actually, going right. Comer was in there for about 10 seconds until he turned the ball over. <laughs> <laughs> so he did start the second half. But it didn't last long. He missed them both. A very tough night for a very talented Stanley Gaines, and he's just got to stay with it. That's all you do, Matt. You don't, you don't worry about it. You got to stay with it. And they haven't had too many possessions yet where they've been able to set up offensive. We'll see when they do get the opportunity where Gaines is on the floor. Got Saul working one on one against Gaines. Will force it and make a beautiful move. <laughs> he gets the ball in the basket somehow. That along with the uh, left handed bank shot in the first half. Two great moves inside getting the ball up on the rim. From the outside, it's Sarasota the sophomore. If they could just get that working, they could get Mr. Gaines inside possibly, but again, we've got a wide open man at the opposite end and he misses the layup. And who he missed it? Rebound. Well, that would be Gutsall. Back up and couldn't get it. Rebound there. Colleen couldn't get it. And Gaines finally says enough. Let me get this thing out of here. With authority, he pulled that ball out. Yeah, Cooley's not a big scorer for this team. Only scores about five a game, but he had a wide open shot there. Gaines drops it off to Sarasoli. Morris got the rebound for Providence St. Mel. That's his Kareem Freeman who works it back around the other way. It just seems that Providence St. Mel can't get two buckets in a row. Gaines with a nice move. Can't get his own rebound. That's because Andrews is there. And he started out on the perimeter once again behind the three-point line when he caught the ball. Had a long way to go to get to the basket. Cooley wants a three and gets it to four. Well, Cooley was a little disgusted with himself the last trip down in that missed layup. He said, okay, well, I'll just knock down a three, make it 31-17. I'll feel better about life. He had to talk that one in the basket. That one tried to make its way out and rolled back in for the three. Another thing that we have to discuss here is the defense on Mr. Ford because Ford averages 15. Here's Gaines with a pretty move along the baseline. I'll give Gaines credit. He doesn't get frustrated out there. He just keeps playing and yep. tries to work for his opportunities. And that time he was able to get all the way to the basket and lay it in. They break the full court press easy to Cooley. Again, he gets it to fall. Good awareness by Bureau Valley breaking that press, really looking up the floor. That time Cooley was able to get the ball in transition, went straight to the bucket, even though Gaines was coming hard, laid it up high off the glass, and it rolled in and once again. You know, you look at Bureau Valley, and, you, and one word comes to mind, Matt, and it's an overused word sometimes, but chemistry is the word that comes to mind because these guys just play together well. It's been that way for the last three years for them. And, you know, I said, look out there and I see a lot of gym rats. These guys yeah. probably are in the gym all, all year long in the summer, really working hard, and it's paying off this time of the season. Emmanuel Ford forces his way right towards our broadcasting area. And, and Ford really hasn't been able to launch too many shots tonight either. And the ones he had been kind of had that side spin yeah. on it too, so it hasn't been very effective from the perimeter. Gaines lets it go out of bounds as it was touched last by Bureau Valley. And cheating is all about rhythm and, and the mental aspect of it. When you get on a roll, hey, you'll, you'll, you'll shoot from anywhere. But even if you're wide open from 16 feet out, you start thinking about it. Bureau Valley really looking to extend that defense. Here's Ford. Got it. That's the Ford we're talking about. Emmanuel Ford with that nice left-handed jumper. And if Providence St. Mel can put on a spurt, they wake this place up. Guts all spins. You hear Coach Timothy Irvin right next to me yelling travel, but uh, didn't get what he wanted there. 
Instead, Gutsall will go to the free throw line. Gutsall, again, very active inside. Tried to take advantage of Sarasoli. Down on the block, has a little bit bigger frame on him, but maybe 30 pounds against Sarasoli. Got to the basket, drew the foul. Andrus averages 16, Oberly 10. Gutsall at the free throw line averages 14. Koenig just under 10, so you've got the kind of balance a lot of coaches would just love to have. Both free throws find their home, and we'll be back with more from the Peoria Civic Center after these local messages. I tell you, Adam's a very special player. He's one of our co-captains, uh, second leading scorer, uh, leading rebounder. Uh, really has a lot of toughness, brings a lot to the table because of that toughness. He's a great leader, uh, plays inside primarily for us, sacrifices for the best of the team. He could play the perimeter, but he's very active around the basket because of his athleticism. And uh, he's just a, a true competitor, one of those kids on our team that I really truly believe refuses to lose. He's kept us tough. Uh, he's a clutch player, hit a big shot against Yorkville uh, up at the Supers uh, Tuesday night. So just a, a really tough kid, a competitor, worked very hard for his coach. Still averaging eight rebounds a game, and he will play the perimeter in college somewhere. No doubt about that. There's a drop pass to Ford, who slices but can't control, gets it back and banks it off the glass. Could have been traveling, but no call. Could have been. It was deflected on the play, and the official called the deflection, but the fact that uh, Ford came back down with the ball should have been a travel call, but he was able to get away with it and put two in for six points in the ball game. When you have the athletic ability of a Providence St. Mel, you'd love to run with the basketball, but they haven't been able to. Well, Bureau Valley's done a great job, very disciplined in defensive transition, getting back down the floor, not allowing St. Mel to get those opportunities. And Gutsall just keeps pounding the ball inside and forcing matters and going to the free throw line. Gaines with his second personal foul. Koenig will set it up outside. They'll go right back inside. Here is Overly. That wasn't close. Sarasoli's got a man. Oh, look at the play. Look at the play by Sarasoli, the sophomore. Woo, behind the back. I tell you, he is so good in transition. At 6'3", he handles the ball very well. Very fluid, long legs. Just takes a couple of strides, and he's at the bucket. And now Bureau Valley's lead is under the 10-point mark, but not for long. Not with Mr. Endress in the ball game. Phil Endress drills the two. Endress now at 15 points. Hopefully he missed the shot last time down the floor. He has not scored. He's 0 for 7 from the field in the ball game. And the average is 10 points a ball game, so he's just having an off night. But when you got a balanced team, you can have a guy have an off night. It's not a problem. But you can't have a Gaines have an off night if you're Providence saying that. And that's what we talked about in the open, too. Gaines has to have a big game. It would average 25 a game and show up right now. He's only got five. His team's not going to win when he has that kind of a performance. That's the kind of pressure you get when you're a, a Division I recruit going to a Big Ten school like University of Minnesota. Ford tried to get it inside. Sarah Soli is going to take a difficult runner. Gaines goes high but can't control, and it's out of bounds off the Bureau Valley. Wasn't strong enough on that rebound. Was Stan Gaines went up with one hand instead of grabbing with two, powerful, and trying to go back up. Bureau Valley is able to get the hand on the ball, and uh, St. Mel back out of bounds. Gaines gets his own rebound. Gaines with eight boards in the ball game to go on along with his seven points. A little bit more action that time on the offensive end. And I like what you say about Gaines. He may not be getting it all done tonight, but his demeanor is as if he has 30. And now he's starting to play a little harder on the defensive end. He's starting to see this as crunch time. His team's down by nine points right now. Two and a half minutes to play in the third period. He may be winding down his career. Inside, it's Koenig. Good defense, but Gutsall's there to put it back home. And Gutsall gets that weak side rebound because Stan Gaines went over to try to block the shot defensively. He was the man who was assigned to Gutsall and wasn't there to block him out. Ford is going to be way off the mark, and Gutsall just comes down with it and controls. 
It's, it's a tough again. shot. Tough shot for a left-hander from the left, the left uh, baseline. He's going away from the basket that time. Got saw just a quick cut to the basket and knocked two of his 17 points. Is on fire. He wants to get back to the final four. He wants to get beyond a third place trophy. And, you know, when you've played. Well, let's first of all, before we continue that thought, let's go to Lee Hall. Lee, where are you at? Well, I'm in the Providence St. Mel crowd. Now, it's not the biggest crowd, but I think it might be the loudest, although I can't hear them right now. Okay. That's a little better. That's a little better. Hi, right, there you are. Hey. Turn around, you're on TV. Hey, uh, you guys are down 13. Have you given up yet? No! 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 We, oh, we, I've been with the team since, since the beginning of the season. I've been at every game. We gonna win. I believe in God. God said we gonna win. We how, how did you like that play by Sarah? Did you like that play by Sarah So? That was, yes, that was real. Yes, nice. All right, uh, Stan Gaines got to get going. Um, yeah, Stan is always in control of his game. He gonna get back in there. Okay. That's my class, man. I believe it. All right, that's the report from the St. Mel side. So he's on, he's going to get on it. They're down 13, but there's no quit right here. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Jim, are you there? Hello. I, I know what Hello, you're talking about. Hello, caller. Hello, hey, Lee, caller. Go Lee, ahead. Lee, you're on TV, man. I know. How you doing? Oh. Of course, don't forget, you can get all the information you need on IHSA.org. IHSA.org consists of over 8,000 pages of material. The website contains complete year-by-year -year results for each sport, the most extensive library of Illinois high school sports records, and much, much more. That's where I get my info. You can find the TV network schedule wherever you are. Also, the IHSA Score Zone, which provides complete state series results, coverage of regional, sectional, super sectionals. It's there all year. You be there with your mouse. Way out of Sarasoli. Gaines goes, ooh, that, now that is a strong move. Very strong on the rebound. Took a little hop that time after he corralled the ball, but they able to get away with it and lay it back in. And again, we talked about where he's a little more effective in doing some damage. He's getting it right inside. Good defense for Drill Valley. Gets it back and now a foul out front. It looks like Sarasoli grabbed him. Minute 34 remaining here, as you can see. In the third quarter, who will play Pleasant Plains? I'd say it's been a wild day, Matt. A wild day, starting with our first game. Farmington, of course, a lot of folks thinking, well, you know, Farmington's been here before. Heron hasn't, but Heron took it to him and uh, pulled away in the last minute of the game. And then a lot of folks weren't giving you the chance against Robinson, but uh, lo and behold. Not, yeah, certainly not the way that game started. I, I didn't give much of a chance, but. You know, we talked about this all day long. Teams get to this level for a reason, and, and they're very good. And once you get to this, this level, a good game, bad game, a little bit of luck here and there, shot goes down, shot doesn't go down, it means the difference between advancing to the next day. And they advanced in overtime over Robinson, and of course, Pleasant Plains in overtime over Bloomington Central Catholic. The free throw, one of two for Overly. And Landfree Comer's back in the ball game wearing number five. Gaines hasn't hit a jumper yet, but now he has from the outside. Good patience that time offensively. Gaines could have forced one earlier and just waited for the ball to come back to him and knock down a little 15-foot shot. Well, if they can get it below 10 here before the quarter, Brad Bickett wants a timeout. He wants to talk things over. I don't think he likes the way the momentum is shifting a little bit. Providence St. Mel looked pretty comfortable the last couple of times down the court with Gaines getting the offensive rebound, and then, of course, the 14-foot jump. And on the defensive end now, Providence St. Mel is starting to extend out a little bit, put some pressure on the ball, try to create some turnovers, get some offense created out of their defense. They've done a better job after that first turnover to start the third period, only have two turnovers the rest of the way. 13 for the ball game, but Bureau Valley does take good care of the ball. They had six turnovers at half, have not had one here in the second half. A good look at uh, what makes high school basketball so much darn fun. A lot of fans seeing just how strong their lungs will actually be over a two-day period. There'll be some hoarse voices tomorrow, <laughs> I guarantee you that. Brandon Bowman in the ball game wearing number 24, and here's a turnover. Coney made a bad pass along the baseline. 
Timothy Irvin, the coach for Providence St. Mel, said, here we go. That's what we need. That's what we needed. Let's get a bucket before the quarter ends. Gaines way outside, spinning up top, and he will be fouled. Looks like Greg Cooley got him. And again, Gaines and Sarasoli both out of the perimeter behind the three-point line. Gaines trying to create some offense, getting the dribbles to the basket. Gutsall's doing a good job of staying in front of him, but he gets to the bucket and gets the foul. There's a good shot of the man headed to Minnesota. For all you Big Ten fans, follow the uh, career of Mr. Gaines. And still be not, not in bad shape if they can keep this under 10 going into the fourth quarter. They just really haven't put a good six to eight point spurt together, man. Well, Gaines right now knocks down this. Free throw would give him 13 in the ball game. had three at half, so he's really stepped it up here in the third period. But he can't get the second free throw as Endress clears the boards. Will Bureau Valley hold for a final shot here? That's up to Brad Bickett. He calls the shots. Whoa. Gaines came over and helped out defensively, but instead of grabbing it, he just pounded it out of bounds. They asked him at the Urban, what, is it more pressure coming to state when you're an assistant? <laughs> he said, are you kidding? When you're the head coach, you got, you got a little bit more. <laughs> Andrus from way outside, no rebound. Providence St. Mel and plenty of time. 30 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Along the baseline, Gaines got it. It's down to a seven point game. And Bureau Valley at the other end should have held for one. The roll right now at St. Mel is on and Gaines himself with 11 points here in the quarter. Nice little baseline jump shot to pull it within seven. Andrus will work against Ford. He'll fire a three. Ford bothered him a little bit. Here comes the rebound. No time left, and that's the way the third quarter will come to a close with a rush from Providence St. Mel to make it 41-34. We're back with the final quarter after these local messages. It's who wants to be in the final four day here in Peoria. And of course, we're setting the stage with the final quarter final game. Tomorrow, we'll get started bright and early for basketball at 11 a.m. as Heron takes on Unity. And that game, of course, will be followed with Pleasant Plains waiting to see whether they take on Manlius Bureau Valley or Providence St. Mel, which has suddenly found the shoulders that carries them so often, the shoulders of Stanley Gaines. Well, they did it primarily because they started to hit some shots. Only 30% in the first half, shooting 60% there in the third period, 9 out of 15 from the floor. And, of course, we'll be back for the championship game tomorrow night. So a full day and good pressure on the ball there by Landfree Comer. And again, that, that's, you put that into the positive category for Providence St. Mel because it forced Bureau Valley to use a timeout they might need later. Definitely see a little bit more of a hop in Providence St. Mel's step right now. They've really picked it up defensively and that's created some offense for them as well. Getting a little more energy out of the defensive end, created more of a sense of urgency on the offense. They've cut into that 10 point lead at half. Now it's only seven here starting the, th the fourth period. And of course, for a moment there, it looked like Euro Valley was on the verge of a blowout in the third quarter, but again, a couple of quick buckets by Gaines. And as you noted, Matt, an, an increase in, in intensity on the defensive end, and they've got to have that. Here 
There's a pass for it, almost took it away. Endress really had to battle hard to get that thing under control. Look at Ford's feet, watch his feet. He leaves and gets it on over to Koenig who missed the shot. Boy, Koenig's having a tough night, isn't he? And it's a tough call because it looks like Bureau Valley is going to maintain possession. Tough miss that time by Koenig, but again, Phil Endress does a great job handling the ball, was able to get inside the defense, just uh -oh. fell short. Look out, uh, guts all's open, we'll make you pay on that. And that's just bad defense on the inbounds. Gutsall just kind of sneaks around in there and gets his openings. He's got 15 or 17 points now in the ballgame to lead Bureau Valley. Another turnover this time down the floor. 14 in the ballgame now for Providence St. Mel. A little unforced error that time on the sideline. Well, just two or three good minutes here of basketball by Bureau Valley, and I think uh, they'll put too much space between themselves and Providence St. Mel, no matter how much intensity they try to crank up. Coney wants to make up for the last trip down, but Gaines says out of town on that one. And Great Gaines defensive will. effort there by Gaines, and he still corralled the ball afterwards. Homer, get it! Landry Comer, who only averages three points a ball game, nailed it! <laughs> And that kept him in the ball game because the coach had somebody in reporting for him to the scorer's table. He said, hey, if he's going to get hot, I'm going to keep him in there. And Providence St. Mel comes away with it after a miss by Oberly. They don't have numbers, so they'll wait. It's a six-point contest, as close as the Knights have been for a long, long time. All by himself. Ball is saved, maybe, but Endress tips it ahead. Great effort by Endress, even though he didn't come up with that ball. Very smart to tip it out. Sarah Soli looking for trouble, but finds an opening. Can't get it to fall. Underneath it's Gaines, back off the glass. But Gaines is scoring his points inside. He's still playing on the perimeter. Sarah Soli really doing the damage there on that possession for St. Bell. He drove through three people and still got a shot off. And, of course, Gaines put it back home. We're back after this timeout. This IHSA broadcast is being brought to you by Agco Tractor. You gotta drive one. And by Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. Bradco Supply Corporation is also proud to be a sponsor of this year's Illinois High School Association State Basketball Tournament, the home of America's original March Madness. You see all those fine companies in Mundelein saying the best of luck to Providence St. Mel and Bureau Valley. And Providence St. Mel, Matt, is as close as they've been. It's down to four and plenty of time left. In the dynamic duo for St. Mel. We talked about the two best players for Bureau Valley and Endress and Gutsall. They've started to show up here for St. Mel as well with Sarah Soli and Gaines leading the way here in the second half. Endress had to give up his dribble way out front. Gutsall to the glass. No. Rebound Sarah Soli. They can cut it to two. The young man from Chicago, Sarah Soli gets it blocked and no call. Endress inside. Good defensive play that time by Endress. An excellent play. Koenig pulls up. Hits it off the glass. That's a big bucket for Bureau Valley and a big bucket for Nathan Koenig, the junior. And we've got an injury at the other end. Or Sarah Soli lost a contact. A contact. That's, a, that's better than an injury. Didn't make it back down the floor. Nice little pull-up shot that time off the glass by Koenig. What a turn of events there. The great block by Endress, which denies Providence St. Mel creeping to within two. And then at the other end, it was basically a five on four. And I gotta give Conan credit. He was cool about it. And you gotta love, you gotta love players who kiss the glass. Yeah, and Conan, two for ten in the ballgame with that bucket. So he's one out of his first nine. Still had the confidence to put that shot up off the glass in transition. Again, they forced Gaines way outside. 50 feet from the basket. And this is just basically one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a lot of plays being called. Gaines, can he hit that? <laughs> not a lot of plays being called, but if you can still get two and stay within four, it's still productive. 
Phil Endress, maybe the coolest cookie in Hero Valley. Guts off. Yeah, again. Adam Guts off. That time a little bit more of a controlled drive by Guts off. The previous time he took it inside, he tried to take it from too far out. Good pass, good action that time on the offensive end. Sarah Soli called for travel. And a big turnover at this juncture with 4.49 remaining. Again, Gutsall was the man on, with the defensive pressure that time from Bureau Valley. Created the turnover number 15 in the ball game for Providence St. Mel. Who's alone on the baseline again? Oh, at that time we've got a, a little bit of a mix up between Virgil Vaughn and Adam Gutsall. I don't know if you want to take on Adam. No, St. Mel a little frustrated in this situation. Feel the game possibly slipping away. And again, Gutsall just takes it to the basket the last couple of times. Well, Virgil thought he had all the ball there, so Gutsall was just trying to yank it out. That happens in this game. No harm, but a foul. <laughs> Not a no harm, no foul situation. And Gutsall, the last possession, even though it was a tie-up, he was trying to smooth things over. And... Uh, Vaughn that time, will come out. Vaughn wanted nothing to do with it. Vaughn will come out now as Larry Morris checks back in. A bucket here by Bureau Valley would be huge. Lead is six. The Storm has time on their side. Koenig, who hit that big one, goes up, doesn't get that one. Gaines comes down with it. Gaines with his 12th rebound to go along with 18 points. That one kind of fell right into his hands. Ford kind of buried over there on the left baseline, has to get it back out. And again, Gaines way outside. Sarasoli pulls up. Too much iron. Rebound. Ford saved it and kept it alive. Here comes Gaines. Gaines over on the left wing, and we've got traveling called again. Good pass that time. From inside the lane by Gaines to the perimeter, Sarasoli tried to get started a little too quickly. Had the shot from the perimeter, tried to get a little closer. Here's Andrus. Not there. And Providence St. Mel gets another chance to close, and they've got to get it done this time. They can't go two, three trips down and come up empty. No, a tough shot that time by Andrus. Really forced one, I thought, off the perimeter defense. Good job by Andrews, comes up with a steal. Well, he made up for it, the big one. Gutsall's got a man open along the baseline. Koenig, it's back to Cooley. He can't hit it. Rebound, St. Matt. Boy. That could have pretty much... And again, St. Mel's not been able to take advantage as uh, Bureau Valley has come up empty the last few trips down the floor. Providence St. Mel just goes down the floor with chances to cut it, but can't. And you know what really kills you is when you don't get a shot off. That's what kills you. Well, they've turned the ball over the last three times down the floor. 17 in the ball game now for Providence St. Mel. Only seven with six at the half for Bureau Valley. Yeah, let's hear from uh, Coach Timothy Irvin about... Uh, Downstate officiating because he's uh, had to look at some calls here in the last couple of minutes. Here he is. No, I don't. I don't feel it's different, and I don't talk about it. Um, what I tell my guys is, we play based on how the officials are calling the game. I mean, every game could be different, could be officiated differently based on the different officials. So I just say play what how you're taught to play. If you don't, if you don't reach, you won't get a foul called on you. If you move your feet, you won't get a foul called on you. Take care, you know, if you don't charge on somebody, it won't be a foul. Uh, you know, take care of the basketball. From Mr. Irvin, we go to Mr. Hall courtside. Lee. All right, Mr. Albrecht, thank you very much. We're with Terry Gutshaw, the principal of Bureau Valley. His son Adam is out there. This was his picture in the Peoria Journal Star this morning. Uh, they spray painted his hair blue. He went along with that if they won the Super. Now I understand the rumor going around, the reports we have are that if they get to the trophy round tomorrow, you're going to shave your head? That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. i got to get rid of this gray hair somewhere <laughs> or another. So, hey, I think they want my head shaved more than they want the trophy, maybe. I don't know. But, hey, it's all a lot of fun. 303 left. It's a close shave here for Bureau Valley. That could mean a close shave for Terry Gutshaw. Back to you. What strategy? If we win, the principal goes bald. Of course, uh, Adam Gutsaw, that's his dad. 
Providence St. Mel with a crucial trip down the floor. There's a long jumper outside. It's good for three from Sarasota. And suddenly it's down to a three-point game. One possession now. See if St. Mel can get a stop on the defensive end. <laughs> Just when you think it's time to say goodbye to St. Mel, they pop up again. Auburnly inside with a tough shot. Probably had the ball deflected, came right back to him, and he said, look what I got. Laid it right in off the, over the rim. Oh, Sarah Sully kind of looked at that for a second. He thought about it. I don't know if you want to think about a 30-footer. Gaines with a sweet touch. One on five there. He kind of weaved his way in through the defense. Was able to get him about five feet and lay it in off the rim. I think they call it the me against the world play. They just keep coming back. Andrus driving, hitting. Nobody's jumping in the lane to stop these driving Bureau Valley Storm players. Well, a guy like Andrus has done such a great job of dishing the ball off on his penetration. That time he took it all the way. Sarah Sully, look, he wants it. Is he going to get it? No, it's too hard. Here comes Bureau Valley. Guts off against everybody, and he's fouled. It was Gutsall against three St. Mel players, but he kept steaming and picked up the whistle. Gutsall didn't have the numbers there, but you're right. He just kept going, took it strong, kept the ball away, away from the defender and was able to draw the foul. Good job by Adam Gutsall. He'll go to the line to try to extend his 21-point performance. What a night he's had. Came in averaging 14. His high for the year was 22, and uh, he has it again. 22 for Adam Gutsall. Nobody knew what the identity of this Bureau Valley team would be. Of course, they always had Ruben Slock for those past couple of years and Mike Barons and John Elliott. So they just kind of got, they got some breathing room to decide what kind of team they'd be. They weren't expected to be, you know, this one-dimensional team. And here is another great steal by Andrus. And that might do it. How many times have we seen him do that tonight? He gets his hands on so many balls out here. Great job by Andrews once again. Nine steals in the ball game for Bureau Valley and 18 turnovers for Providence St. Mel. And Stanley Gaines made that ill-advised pass that time. As you can see, Andrews hustling after it. He does a great job on that wing defensively. 70% from the line is Bureau Valley tries to get into the medal round again for the third year in a row. No Class A team has ever done that three years in a row. And, you know, people could argue, well, you come from a part of, uh, you know, a, a basketball part of the state where maybe things are down and you're the best team so you can get, but they win. They win when they get down here. That's the deal. <laughs> well, it's not that, but there are other good teams that are playing to get here. It's not just they're playing teams that just lay over against them. They're playing tough teams. They've just put together a great system. Coach Brad Bickett does a great job of his team, both on the offensive and defensive end. Games from outside for three and a timeout. Providence St. Ben. They're within five. A little life left with a minute 15. Yeah, of course, you're talking about good teams, and Yorkville's one of those teams because they expected to be down here, but they were turned away in the final 10 seconds by an Adam Gutsall baseline jumper. And don't look now, but Mr. Stan Gaines has 23 points in this ball game after having five at halftime. It's a big three. Only his first three-point attempt of the ball game, but he's able to knock it down. And Stanley Gaines now with 23 points to go along with his 12 rebounds to pull St. Mel within five. And it wasn't bad defense. They had two guys on him. He's definitely feeling it here in the second half. And into the first half, he was one for seven. He's been nine for 12 here in the second half, 75% performance. And Ford has been held to just six points. He averages 14, so Bureau Valley just wants to take care of the basketball right now and get to the free throw line. Need to be careful here with a 10 second violation. They make it. Andrus, very patient, and out to get him is Stanley Gaines, and Gaines will be called with his third personal foul. Stanley Gaines, of course, going to Minnesota to be a Golden Gopher. Here's some of the other Class A first team players. 
Terrence Parker, Lyle, Chris Burris, Leo, DJ Thronberg, Casey Westfield, and the list goes on. And we saw Jordan Roth. Dana Ford looking to see him down at Illinois State next year from Tams Egyptian. All those young men going to a Division I school. Big free throws. Andrus does it all. Ford with desperation, way too hard. Gaines will control. He'll go back up. They should just let him go. And he does get it to fall in another timeout with a five-point Bureau Valley lead. We've got a timeout, Providence St. Bill. Stan Gaines got that ball with three defenders in front of him. The ball just coming right into his hands. He, he didn't even really get off the ground for that rebound. But when you got the hot hand, it seems to find you. Well, he's got just about half of Providence St. Mel's points. He's got 25. A lot of great basketball yet to be played. And of course, Hebron uh, kind of started this whole thing off 50 years ago with the tiniest school to ever win a championship. And there's a book out about it as well. They were giants. And you can check it out on IHSA.org and order that book, as a matter of fact. A lot of great memories made here in boys basketball. Everybody wants to play at state, but only a few get the chance. And of course, the man who's going to the free throw line right now has had more chances than most. His third straight year as a starter for Bureau Valley, Phil Andrews will try to put an end to this thing. 56-51 our score. If you're just joining us to check in, Providence St. Mel trailed at the half by 10 and then got even further behind early in the third quarter, but then started to chip away. Got it down to a three-point ball game here just about two minutes ago, but now Bureau Valley riding itself at the free throw line. Enders now with 22 points. Nearly matching Adam Gutshaw's 23-point performance. Sarah Soli, no. Ford, yes. Again, a timeout. Timothy Irvin uses his last timeout to set up the defense. We're back to check out the final 32 seconds after this timeout. And we're back at Carver Arena, 58-53, Bureau Valley leading. And uh, this, of course, uh, Elite Eight Friday. It's the eighth day of March. It's a very special day. Probably one of the most unsung heroes in the state of Illinois. Meredith Albrecht, Mrs. Jim Albrecht biggest saint on the planet. It's her birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Meredith. Happy birthday to you. Holy cow. I don't know how she puts up with you, man, but uh, happy birthday to her. God bless and good luck. And wow. I'm sorry, but we're sending him back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only reason she puts up with me is because I don't sing like you do. <laughs> That was Harry Carey. Oh, that was Harry. I'm he sorry. Was, he was down. You didn't see him? <laughs> Happy birthday, sweetheart. Adam Guts all inbounding. That's pretty much all they have to do at this point. Man, wide open at the other end. Cooley will finish it off. Greg Cooley, and that should do it. Providence St. Mail trailing by seven. They'll fire another one up here. The mark, and that's kind of a fitting way to end this thing with Endress somewhere around the basketball net. Then Bureau Valley's going to advance okay. to the Saturday round once again to get two two additional games. That's the key. You don't want to come down here and make an early exit after the first day. And you know clearly, Phil Endress, Adam Gutsall, they had the performance here today to send them to their team into the next round. If you had to make a choice between player of the game, between Mr. Endress and Mr. Gutsall, it'd pretty much be a toss-up, but because of the way he handled the ball, I'd have to go with Endress just setting the stage for everybody. It's America. I get the vote, right? <laughs> well, Gutsall did a great job, too, sure defensively did. against Gaines. Gaines really got going in the second half, but he really held him back in the first half, created that 10-point cushion at halftime, and did a great job. Well, you know, our director can make 
Wonderful calls. Frank Vance can decide there could be co-players of the game. I mean, you know, that's what directors do. Jim O'Boy could do that too. They are both worthy, that is for sure. Counting down the final 10 seconds. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that one was a five-pointer, I think. Not there, and Endress with another rebound. How many rebounds does he have? He's just gonna throw it up, and that's the way it will end with Bureau Valley doing what they've done the last three years. Heading to the quarterfinals. Three in a row for the stall. And their business isn't done. They, won't, they don't want to head home with a third place trophy again this year. It should be a very interesting game against Pleasant Plains because these two teams are kind of bookends, aren't very they? Very similar, very similar. Pleasant Plains has a little bit more size to contend with, and that may be a situation that uh, Bureau Valley has to be prepared for for our second semifinal game tomorrow. And of course, we'll start it off for you as the teams exchange high fives. We'll start it all for you at 11 o'clock tomorrow. I'll be here along with my sidekick, Matt Taphorn, and uh, Kurt Pegler and Doug Altenberger will do game one for you. Lee Hall is standing by with a very happy Brad Bickett. Lee? Right. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, Brad Bickett, uh, you guys got a lead. Providence St. Mel made a great run at you, really made a game of it. Uh, your guys were able to hold off that run. Yeah, our kids got a lot of toughness. You know, they fought hard all year long. And I'd say that the kids from St. Mel's played hard. They made some plays. Uh, Gaines made some tough shots. Sir Ole did. But our kids, we took care of the basketball. We stayed aggressive, made some plays at the other end. And down the stretch, we made our free throws. And uh, I'm just really proud of our kids. I love these guys. They play awful hard for me, and they're pretty passionate about the game of basketball. I thought that experience on this floor the last couple of years really paid off and showed itself. Tonight. I thought these two, especially Adam and Phil, really played poised. I think they had 21 of our 24 at half, I believe. I expect these guys to step up and make plays. Uh, Adam and, and Phil both had great tourneys last year, and uh, they're going to lead us to hopefully some good things yet to come. No Class A team's ever taken home hardware three years in a row. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, Brad Bickett. Uh, let's talk to Adam Gutshaw. We talked to his dad who had the blue hair yesterday. Uh, tell me about that effort out there tonight uh, by both teams. Uh, they, they got down but came back and made a real run at you. Yeah, same L, they're real athletic, and uh, we knew we just had to play as hard as we can if we wanted to pull this out, and I think defensively we did a good job. Uh, we, we try to stop Gaines. He's just a real good player. Uh, he's just so athletic and stuff, but we played a good team defense tonight, and I think that's our, our, why we won. You guys were able to, to break the press pretty well, I thought, too. Yeah, uh, we went over that all uh, week and stuff, skeleton uh, press breaker, and we just want to get up and go and stuff and finish, and that's how you get easy baskets, and that's what we had to do tonight. They were an awfully athletic team. How did you guys, How do you feel you guys counterbalanced that? Uh, they're very athletic. Uh, we played some other teams that are real athletic. Uh, Fulton, they're real good. They're real aggressive and up in your face defensively. Uh, Byron, they're uh, just the same. And I think we've played teams. I think we've uh, learned from them, and that's paid off tonight. We uh, we showed the newspaper uh, photo of you spraying your dad's hair, and now you guys get to shave him, right? Because you guys are going to take home a trophy again. Uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. He's <laughs> receding hairline. That's going to be unique to see him butched off, but it'll be fun. All right, congratulations, Adam Gutshaw. Uh, Phil Endress, he's been here three straight years, and, and that experience really paid off for you tonight, didn't it? You bet. Um, the whole team's had experience, you know, and it, it did pay off. You know, Coach, Coach has the experience, too, and he led us, you know, through the game. Tell me about this year. Uh, Ruben Slot graduated. Uh, a lot of folks, uh, Coach says, a lot of folks outside the team didn't really feel like maybe you guys had the talent to get here this year. What happened? Um, well, we always believed in ourselves, and we just worked every day. We knew if we worked hard, then we'd have a shot at, at good things, and, and they're happening. They're, we're still going, so. You guys share the ball. That helps. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> we don't have any stars in here, so we have to. All right, you are uh, our player of the game. Congratulations. You did a lot of little things well besides just score points tonight, I thought. Um, yeah, I just try to do what I can to help the team, and, you know, I got a supporting cast around me that, you know, follows Coach and me, and and uh, we just tr try to get the job done. You guys make a little history here tonight. You're going to take home a trophy for the third year in a row. No Class A team's ever done that before. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we just keep trying, and I guess that's what happens when you work hard. All right, good luck against Pleasant Plains tomorrow. Thanks a lot. All right, Phil Endress, uh, Bureau Valley. They win it here tonight, and they are still alive down to the final four here for a state championship. Back with more from Carver Arena after these local messages.
Four teams move on, four teams go home. An interesting note, Providence St. Mel had not lost to a Class A team all year long. That streak is over, Matt Taphorn. Well, Bureau Valley's been there before. They're doing it again. They're advancing to the Saturday round. They're looking forward to taking home a higher place trophy tomorrow. I don't, I don't think they're thinking third place. For Lee Hall, for Matt Taphorn, I'm Jim Albrecht. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning for the Final Four at 11 o'clock. Good night, everybody.